onto the hospital and I keep checking the scans and things and uh, for now everything's really good and I'm, I'm feeling healthy, I've got loads of work and uh, life is good. Um, that's clearly great. I, I always wonder with people you know, who've, who've been so close mm. to, to, to death, do you wake up every day and go, look, wow, I'm alive, you know, I take a totally new attitude to life or, you know, a few months down the line, you know, you've still got to put the bins out, you've still got to get work and, and life yeah. sort of carries on as normal. Well, life, it has to carry on as normal. I've got four kids under the age of 10, so I'm, I'm kept busy with the kids and everything. Um, you know, they've got something on every night, whether it's piano lessons or my boy's got football and rugby and things. So life goes on as normal, but you do tend to cherish, you know, the moments that you, I'm still here because I so nearly lost my life. Um, so, but as you say, you know, you've got to do normal things, as you've got to pay the bills and things like that. So, uh, but I've had a lot of help. I've had a lot of help from the TV companies as well, BBC, Sky, ESP. They've all looked after me. They've given me plenty of work, um, <coughs> which I appreciate, you know, because it's nice to be kept busy. It's nice to be out there. Well, that's not, I mean, that's not because you're real. That's because you're good at it, isn't it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Were you totally overwhelmed by the amount of get well messages that you received from, mm. I mean, was it worldwide? Well, it was, it was frightening really, you know, flowers and for the wife and things like that. And um, just people from inside the world of sport and outside, you know, people like Ian Woosnam and um, Jimmy Tarbuck and all these type of people and pe Joe Calzaghi. Um, the, the, the list is endless, really. Big John Tosha came to see me at hospital and his son Cameron. Um, but I was overwhelmed, you know, and it, it helps a lot, I think, when you're, when you're reading other people's experiences yeah. and they're telling you about good things that have happened to them, sometimes not so good, you know, that can touch you as well. But, um, you know, get well messages, it really perks you up in your time of need, you know, when you've got that quiet moment on your own and you're going through all these cards and people have made the effort to send them out to you and people like Gordon Strachan, uh, as I said, the list is endless. Didn't Gordon Strachan send you a special message, though? Yeah. <laughs> He said there's easier ways to lose weight, big man, the, the way you are. <laughs> but um, I lost five stone in weight as well because the chemotherapy had nearly 70 sessions of chemo. So uh, that just, if anybody's been through chemo that's watching, they, they, they'll second me and, you know, it totally zaps your body. You lose your appetite. I love my grub as well, probably as you're aware. Um, so you lose your appetite, you know, you're sick and you're just, it's just a terrible thing, but it's, it's making you better. As much as if you read Lance Armstrong's book, yeah. he was asking for more chemotherapy in the end because it was, you know, it was, he knew what chemicals were going in his body. It was making him, it was making him better because it was eradicating the cancer. And how difficult is each day? I mean, is it a real struggle? Just, you know, what's it like? Yeah, well, I just turned my phone off. I left it off for three months and I, I just could not be bothered. Some people were phoning me up saying, we'd like to come and visit you. And I was just like, no disrespect, I don't really feel like, you just, you just cannot be bothered. You really, really can't, you just lay there. The nurses are really good because they know you're not in a mood or nothing every morning, it's just the way that the chemo's making you feel. Um, but you, it's surprising how quickly like, you recover. Once you start to get some good vibes and a couple of the, um, you know, you get good news and things, it really sort of perks you up a little bit and the, the, you know, it's amazing how quick you can turn the whole situation around to being a positive from a negative, you know? Um, you started the John Hartson Foundation. Tell us about it. Well, I've set up a foundation because, um, because of mainly I've been in the public eye and I've, I've, I've um, raised quite a lot of awareness. There's been a lot of people gone and checking themselves on the back of, of, of listening to my story. So I just felt I was in a position to, to put the, uh, some events on. There's a management company in Swansea that run the whole, the whole foundation for me. Dragon management. So, the hardest thing I've got to do really is turn up at these events because they've got so much on. We're doing we're doing a walk now in July, which is a, a year on from my anniversary for my first life-saving brain operation I had. Um, we, we we walk in Ben Nevis, which is the biggest mountain in Great Britain, up in Fort William in Scotland, up north there. We're doing that. We've got a 50-hour football match, which which we're going to put on as well. It's 50 hours in one go? Continuous, yeah. Okay. It's, it's the equivalent to I'm 33. You don't want to be on the bench and not be brought on yeah. with five hours <laughs> left. <laughs> don't you? I, I'm just kicking <laughs> off for going home. Is this what I'll do it? But um, it's the equivalent to 33 matches, continuous, 90 minutes. Nice. Uh, kick off 10 o'clock on a Friday morning, finish 12 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Where is that located? It's in Huntingdon in Hertfordshire. Okay, yeah. um, they've had permission off the school to keep the lights on, on the pitch overnight. Yeah, okay. So the lads have been tremendous and um, it's all raising awareness, raising funds, which I can then give back mm. to the hospitals, cancer units, children's wards, whatever. And um, Gary Speed's running the marathon Speed for the foundation next week. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. we rang him up in the week. This is what Gary said. 
He's one of the best volleyers of the ball ever. And he's always been one of the biggest fighters. So it's great to see him doing so well. It was an easy decision to run the marathon for both his and the Bobby Robson charity. Just make sure you plug the website to sponsor me, John. Although, whatever you do, don't mention the 70 quid's worth of Chinese he ate before the Italy game once. <laughs> Come by. <laughs> No, I didn't. It wasn't seventy pound. It was about fifty quid. Me and Mark Cross. <laughs> oh, that's all right then. Me was and Mark it, was Crosby it an expensive Chinese restaurant, or was it just a lot? Of just food? a lot of Chinese food. No, the boys all tucked in. To be fair, um, night before the game, and we were fed up with the hotel food. So, me and Big Cross, Big Norm, the goalkeeper there, we had uh, we tucked into most of it. <laughs> right now, I'm a little bit worried about this next bit because you've got a disc inserted in your head haven't you mm -hmm. that regulates your blood flow which means you cannot do any physical you couldn't play football again but we're about to send you out to the car park to kick a ball uh don't worry about it being too competitive though because it's only baby elvis in goal so right, you should okay. be all right um because he's in red the psychologists say that he's the best color kind of a saving penalty yeah, exactly. so he's changed from white to red um you make your way out to the cake well we in here say everybody isn't it great to see John Artson? Thanks, John. Don't let that red suit put you off, though. You smash it past him. He's a Spurs fan as well. <laughs> well, now it's time for some more fun. Super John. Johnny, come down here, son. Come on. Walk on, son. How you doing, boys and girls? Bind on, Joe. Bind on, eh? I've got to say, you know, I'm a little bit stumped stood here today because I had a really good gag lined up for you about Eil Berkovich. <laughs> but before the show, the producer say, said, you can't say it. It's a bit of a kick in the teeth, to be honest with you, John. Hey, <laughs> kick in the teeth! <laughs> yeah, Johnny, come back! Don't run away, sir. <laughs> that was awful. The delivery was terrible. Just awful. It was An rubbish. Elvis impersonator and a cake. Never has been and never will be funny. It's just rubbish. What are the judges from Britain's Got Botox doing out here? <laughs> John, I'll tell you what, mate, ignore them. Have a little kick at goal, son. Let's see if you've still got it. Let's have a look. Remember, respect me and wait for the whistle. Get on your line. Get on your line. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Good work. John, come down here. I'm afraid. I stopped that quite well. Good save. Good save. On that miss, son. We're just going to see the replay here. Talk us through it. Well, I thought I struck it quite well, but I've got to say, they've got to give the keeper a bit of credit there. He stood up, great safe. But I was quite happy with the strike. <laughs> what are you mugs over there got to say about it? Awful! Just upsetting! <laughs> Terrible, I won't be watching again. I will not take criticism from someone who is married to Les Dennis. Back inside <laughs> to you, Max and Els. Hey, the red kit. The red kit worked, didn't it? it kind of